there. But I'd like to welcome everybody uh, to the first, I think hopefully the first annual uh, seasonal jobs uh, briefing for the uh, Rivers River Leadership Program uh, Certificate Program students and their guests. Uh, we're lucky enough to have uh, Monica Zimmerman from the Bureau of Land Management and Dave Cernicek from the uh, U.S. Forest Service with us today to just give us some overview of the types of jobs that their agencies have that are seasonal jobs um, that would be available to folks who are still students, let, let's hope. Uh, this will fulfill your requirement if you had one of these jobs, it would fulfill your requirement for your internship, for your certificate. Um, but more importantly, they're great opportunities to, to explore uh, that you know, the options for maybe doing this as a career. And if it is something you want to do for a career, they're a great, you know, stepping stone towards towards advancing that once you do graduate. So this is going to be about a 30-minute um, web meeting. I have everyone muted except for our presenters. Uh, if you do have questions, please feel free to type them into the chat box. Or you can email them. I'll be monitoring the chat box during this session, uh, and we'll try to get to some of the questions. I'll also stay a little bit after the half hour, and I can answer those. Or I will email you directly if you email me and get you get you those answers. Uh, so I've asked the our guests to give you a little bit of an overview of their agency's work in river management, and then also a little background on on their own jobs. Um, and then to give you kind of a, a insight into the types of seasonal work that is available and a little bit of information on how to apply for those, when they're advertised and how to apply for those. So I will go ahead and, and shift this. Um, we're going to have Monica Zimmerman from the Bureau of Land Management start us off. So let me get to my slides. And Monica, you should be – go ahead, Monica. Okay. Um well, welcome everyone. My name is Monica Zimmerman and I'm an outdoor recreation planner actually in Idaho, not Colorado. Oh. <laughs> That's right. Um, I've been with the BLM for about 24 years and um, I work in southeast Idaho in the Upper Snake Field Office, which is located in Idaho Falls. And so I'm actually just downriver from Dave Cernicek. Um, I work on primarily the South Fork of the Snake River and then we also manage uh, the Henry's Fork and the Main Snake and then um, some other river segments. And so I'm just going to go through some questions that Steve provided to us so that I can make sure I cover everything. But he wanted us to provide some information a little bit of how we work with managing rivers in my job. And so um, my primary focus is on the South Fork of the Snake River where we have, um, it's the South Fork is a 62 mile reach and um, we have an interagency program with three counties, Forest Service and Fish and Game to manage a fee program uh, for the public and so uh, with 10 different boat access sites. And so we receive a little over 200,000 visitors a year to the river system. And so we manage the boat access sites um, and provide those facilities, maintain those facilities for the public uh, to be able to access the river system. Uh, we also have um, a developed campground and trails, and then we also permit uh, outfitters who operate on the river system and provide op um, fishing opportunities for the general public. Uh, we also, um, in our stretch of the river, we have an area where people float into camp. And so we manage that camping opportunity uh, for the public as well. So that's primarily what we deal with as far as is managing the river um, with my job. Um, and that's everything from planning and designing for additional boat access sites, um, and then managing the amount of public that is recreating and then managing the outfitters. So quite a pretty diverse program. And so um, the next question is, is how is your agency involved in river management? And so most of our field offices have programs similar to what I just described where um, they're managing different types of facilities for the public to be able to recreate on um, the rivers that BLM manages. And so uh, I didn't get a number or miles of rivers that we manage, but um, the BLM is mostly in the Western United States, and um, 
some examples of some of the different rivers that BLM manages is like the Rogue River. Um, they co-manage with the Forest Service in Southern Oregon or the Deschutes. Um, there's the American, numerous rivers in Utah, uh, such as the San Juan uh, in the Dolores River, Colorado has a number of rivers. And so anywhere where the BLM has a river system that's highly used by the public, they usually have a, a river recreation program that um, where they're managing different types of facilities, whether they're campgrounds or boat ramps, uh, also outfitters, um, that they're ma managing those for the public. Um, so the next question is, is what type of seasonal positions does our agency hire? And so on the slide that is on the screen that Steve put together, those are the different positions that we essentially fly. Um, there's park ranger, park ranger river patrol, park ranger OHV, park ranger visitor use, and park ranger interpretation. And so essentially um, all of those positions are announced. So Steve, could you pull up that document I sent to you? So this document um, that Steve pulled up for you, this is just an example of an announcement that the BLM will do um, specifically for Idaho of the job opportunities that are available for the summer. And it just, the first paragraph just kind of gives an overview of the BLM. But if you could scroll down, um, Steve, to be able to show all of the positions. Yeah, keep going down. That's good. Oh, go back up. Just go up a little bit. So you can see on here the park ranger river patrol type positions. Um, and it, told, it, it identifies the grade that these positions are announced at. Um, primarily, our seasonal positions are flown in either most likely January, February time period. and um, one of the things that's kind of confusing is you can see in this announcement how the job opens January 16th, but it closes June 29th. Uh, there's a little bit of misconception out there is that's how long the job is open, but we, within um, the offices, we actually will request our human resources office to pull a certificate for us earlier than that June 29th date. So what that means is, for example, this position, these positions opened on January 16th. Come February 1st, I can request our human resources office to pull a certificate for me as of February 1st. So that certificate is only going to have those individuals that have applied in those first two weeks um, that is, is provided to me to review the uh, applications and resumes for potential job opportunities. And so what I recommend to people that are interested in summer employment, which that's essentially what these positions are. These are for our seasonals that we hire. Usually they start sometime in May, usually mid-May. So it works with school schedules and we do work with individuals that are in school. Sometimes we'll have people start beginning of June based on their schools. Um, the, we, uh, and then we usually work people until August if they go back to school, but we usually have the ability to keep people on until September. And um, so anyways, what we do is we, these positions are announced in January. Um, for example, these were announced January 16th. Come February 1st, I would request a certificate that has whoever is applied up to that point, and then I review those applications and start contacting those in individuals. So my recommendation um, for those of you that are looking into positions is to apply as soon as you see the announcement come out, as soon as possible, um, because that's when we truly start our, our hiring process. And... Um, I think that Steve, later on, to wrap it up, he's going to go into how to find these jobs, but essentially they're posted on USA Jobs. I also try to send out this announcement to different universities I work with and then also to River Management Society to let, these, let um, people know that these positions are out there. So I, that's what I had for BLM. Any other questions I missed, Steve?
Uh, no, I, that, that's great. So, so just to clarify, so the jobs open, those two jobs open, and they may be at different locations, but they open on the 16th of January. But in USA Jobs, they'll be listed that they're open until the 29th, but you may, you may actually pull them quicker sooner than that. Correct, correct. And another okay. thing, um, a recommendation I have is, so for example, th this announcement is there for the jobs in Idaho. Each state will have a different announcement. So for example, if you want to work in Colorado, there will be an announcement for Colorado. Um, you have to identify the offices of where you want to work. So if you, um, so when you are applying, for example, in Idaho, you have to check the offices that of where you would like to work. And I recommend just checking as many as possible of places you're willing to work so that your name is not left off the certificate that we receive. Also, I recommend that you plot, apply for all of the grades listed. So for example, um, if you look at the park ranger interpretation, it lists four, five, six, seven. I would apply for every grade because even though you think you may qualify at a seven level um, and you only apply for a seven, but in all reality, HR may not reach you out as a seven, you won't show up on the four, five, and six list. So I recommend that people apply for all grades and then every location yeah. they're interested in. And if you think you're qualifying on your education, make sure you put in your transcripts. Yes. Don't just say you got a master's degree or something on your resume and expect that to work just great for you. Excellent. Well, thank you, Monica. I appreciate that. That's um, so. The, those announcements um, is that something? How how could students receive those announcements, or they just need to go into USA Jobs or other job boards and and look for those positions? Well, they will be on USA Jobs. You can put. Um, flags in USA Jobs when you're um, notified about jobs. But I also, like I said, I also will send them to you, Steve, to get out on the, well, I guess Risa, to get out on the um, river management posting, and then we try to send them to universities we work with. Great, great. Well, thank you very much. And as I said to everyone, um, we, we didn't set aside a lot of time today. I just want to give you an intro to this. So if you do have questions, you could put them in the chat box or you can uh, talk to your, your program mentor and you can email me um, and I will get I will get those things answered. So uh, well, thank you, Maka. We'll, we'll shift to, um, to Dave to mm -hmm. talk about uh, opportunities in the Forest Service. And one of the reasons we scheduled this sort of quickly is there are currently uh, 16 or so positions that are out there that close at the end of the month. So we want to make sure we got this in there before before that happened. So Dave, we'll, I'll go ahead and shift to you. And I'm, while you're starting, I'll, I'll pull up your PowerPoint. That would be great. Um, howdy, everybody. Uh, my name is David Cernicek and the Wild and Scenic River Manager on the Bridger Teton National Forest. I work out of Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Um, it's an awful place to work and live. Uh, we um, are in our final stages of having our, our most of our seasonal jobs open for um, the the 2020 season. So um, students that are applying just straight up for our uh, our our upcoming um, season as as temporary employees, they need to get moving really fast because I believe our deadline is September 30th. Um, get on USA Jobs. Most of our stuff is listed as forestry technician. Um, forestry technician is every type of job we have that is a temporary position primarily. Uh, we also have biolo biologic technicians, that type of thing. But yeah, Forest Service is really weird in what we call jobs. Um, uh, you know, my river rangers are all hired under the job title of forestry technician. Uh, forestry technician, recreation, um, it's uh, the job number, uh, the the number of a forestry technician is a 462. And uh, so look every, look on, look for technicians. Um, a lot of our jobs are also, like my rangers are also out of the same pool that um, the Payette River um, um, scoops out of, as well as um, the salmon, the Salmon River Day Stretch out of Stanley, Idaho. So um, those those are the places to go to. There's a lot of variation in in, in River Ranger jobs between you know. I I definitely want to retire on the Middle Fork as a, in a GS5 position. Um, you know, just taking 
trips down down the Middle Fork of the Salmon um, back to back all summer and, and just talking to people about weeds and campfires and such. Um, on the snake here, our, our jobs are pretty much full contact rangering. We, we deal with about 200,000 people in about two months of time on about eight months, eight miles of, of fun class three whitewater. Uh, it is, is, it is very ch challenging. We do a lot of work with, um, a lot of work with folks. Um, if you go back to, um, go back to that first slide, if you would, Steve. Um, okay. Um, but yeah, here we are, um, busy day with, with Joe Biden on the river. Um, we, you know, lots of things come up when you're, when you're dealing with people. And that's, that's, that's one of the main things I deal with is, is a lot of people. Um, that's part of my job working in the Snake River Canyon, which, which is one of our, our busier sections in the country. The Forest Service has a lot of miles of river all over the country. Um, um, you know, anything that has trees on it, anything that had valuable things for it as, as, as our country moved west was uh, all put on, um, you know, into national forest reserves. Um, as, that, as that came around, we ended up having a lot of water huge amount of our, our nation's drinking water comes off national forests and uh, um, yeah, 60 million, for 60 million people, 3,400 communities deal directly with it. What types of jobs, what, <laughs> what types right, of jobs, sorry do, about that. <laughs> <laughs> what types of jobs do we have in the forest service? We, we have a lot that deal directly with rivers, um, some full-time, some part-time or whatever. I, I went for a lot of mainly um, half to full-time jobs that, that, that go with, go with rivers. Um, some are seasonal, some are um, full-time. You know, we have river managers, river rangers, river planners, river educators, interns. Uh, we have, you know, river fellows that um, can be in school or out of school or, you know, we have a lot of jobs, intern jobs and fellows that, um, you know, lead to full-time permanent jobs. We have permit administrators for outfitter and guides. Uh, we have people that check you in at, at boat ramps. We have fish biologists, water quality specialists, you know, um, some, some of our streams like, you know, out there have uh, just actual boat operator positions for people that just row boats down rivers or operate jet boats, that type of thing. We have hydrologists, geomorphologists, people that, uh, you know, are out in streams or squeezing fish. And, you know, we have very specialized crews Those you know, in the summertime here, we have, you know, fish crews, we have hydrologic, hydro, uh, hydrology crews, that type of thing. Currently uh, with our wild and scenic rivers, we have to um, part of, um, Pro the process when you're getting wild and scenic rivers officially um, doing your planning, you have to have your rivers adjudicated for water rights. Um, and that, you know, so we're probably on our fourth year of having a crew that is specifically going out and monitoring every river and figuring out how many, ultimately we'll figure out how many, you know, what CFS, um, what, how much water we need to preserve our outstandingly remarkable values on our river. So there's a lot of different stuff out there. Next slide, please. Um, you know, as I said, on our, on our forest here, you know, I, I hire a batch of river rangers each year. Um, river interns are definitely possible if, if, if you miss um, the hiring deadlines. Uh, we do have special programs. I, I can tell you more about that. Um, if you are in student status, we can we can uh, um, for the right folks, we can we can put in the um, time and effort to um, get you into the system through special programs um, outside of the temporary hiring program that everybody else has to go through. Um, you know, most of my folks that are rangers do do work on land more they, than they work in the water. We don't just um, get to go rafting all the time. We, you know, we work on projects. We check people in. We fix all the stuff that got broken last weekend. We do some law enforcement, um, a lot of different things. Um, we do, there are, you know, we do have a fish crew. We do have that hydrology crew I mentioned. We do water quality um, and, uh, yeah, the seasonal hydrology crew. Next slide. Um, yeah. Um, what I do for a living. Next slide. Um, yeah. <laughs> I do a lot of different stuff. Here's the basic layout of, of what I do. Um, I, as I said, I live in Jackson. It's, it's hard to find on this map, but it's sort of in that lower left hand. And uh, we had the biggest uh, full watershed designation in the lower 48, 2009, uh, 426 miles of 
13 different rivers and 23 different sections within those rivers were designated in what's called the Snake River headwaters. Um, kind of the beginnings of everything in, on, this, on, this, <clears throat> on the Snake River. Excuse me. <clears throat> we, um, apart here. we had a, so um, some of that falls in Grand Teton National Park, um, like half a mile of shoreline falls into the National Oak Refuge. Um, a tiny little section is in uh, Yellowstone on the Lewis River, but the biggest chunk of all that falls, falls within the, uh, in the uh, Bridger Teton National Forest. So huge amount of planning to do that and a huge amount of stuff to do on a, uh, on a daily, hourly, weekly basis to, to keep that, that wild and scenic designation going. I, I monitor, I, I write big long documents. Every project that's going to go on between the two high water lines is, has to have a section seven analysis to see if it is going to um, protect and enhance those values that the river was protected for or whether it's not. And if it's not, it's not that project is not gonna happen. But uh, a lot of planning, a lot of um, document writing, as I said, um, working with landowners, working with partners, um, dealing with um, very upset um, nonprofits that if there's something they feel is a threat to the rivers or they feel like the agency's doing something wrong, we are what's called the administrating agency. So we are kind of leading the way for all federal agencies, but all federal agencies on anything they're doing that is related to rivers, these rivers is, um, we're all charged with doing nothing that would in any way hurt, harm, preclude um, do any damage to these these uh, protected sections of river and these are the most amazing rivers in the country um, but yeah I fundraise for projects to um, river improvement projects and uh, a lot going on there next slide um, you know I do a lot of hey, Dave we're gonna we're a little short on time yeah uh, okay can we I do get down to the yeah the job programs that you wherever have? you want to go Steve Sorry, uh, sorry about that. No problem. Um, we have what's called, um, we have uh, <laughs> recruitment program areas. We, we do have some um, specific programs that are, that are national programs where we can uh, work directly with students to make things happen. Um, and uh, those, those, are, those are things you're, you should be looking for if you are a student. And a big, big thing, you know, one thing we need to do as, 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 as river management society probably is to figure out exactly where all our river programs are and opportunities are um, at this point. A lot of times you need to find that river program to work with or um, that forest to work with. But uh, w if, if we can make, if we can make relationships, that type of thing, we have um, really neat opportunities. Um, starting with, um, we have the Pathways Program, which is, is basically for a student or a recent graduate where we have a high learning authority where we can get people into the system and, um, and, and working. Uh, as an intern, it's, uh, you know, we can continue to work you past your graduation and, and eventually into a permanent program. Um, it's mainly, and you know, you were supposed to work you on on specific projects that improve your base of knowledge and and not have you cleaning toilets. Um, so, really neat program. Um, one USDA intern is is much like that as as well as um, um, you know that is another one mutually beneficial relationship. There's got to be something in it for you. It's not just and you know those are that's the type of thing where um, you know you know, you approach, you know, we work, we work with you to find something that is going to be a benefit to both the agency and to the student of, you know, what are you interested in doing and how can we match that with a project that I really need done right now. Keep going, Steve. Um, you know, difference between there's interns that are not to exceed a certain amount of time and there's inter internships that are indefinite. They can go on for a long time. Um, you know, interns in the summer, are, you know, that's a not to exceed it's going to be for a few months and you're done and you're back to school. Um, and we have recent grad programs that are, uh, you know, if you have great grades and you're within a, you know, you've worked with us through as a student and you've got picked up a year of experience, then, then um, we have special magical powers to actually get you into a, a permanent position, um, to convert you into a position after you graduate and, and get you started at a, at a beginning level position. It's not glorious, but it's Wait. a start. Please. Yes, sir. 
We have some grad students on on that might be interested in this next one um, as well, Dave. So, mm -hmm. and Monica did want me to tell you that uh, that BLM has the same pathways that Dave is Dave is reviewing right here for um, for folks as mm -hmm. well in the BLM. Yeah, these are all these are mainly national programs. Other than um, the USDA one is 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 a you know bureau specific, but uh, you know president. Presidential management fellows are, are are for kind of the best of the best students with amazing backgrounds and uh, great grades, but um, it's an it's the ultimate opportunity to go to so, do something really really neat. There's a lot of them that you, usually happen in Washington D.C. and and you end up with um, an incredible career opportunity. Um, we have a lot of people that are working in our Wild and Scenic River Management Office at, at higher grades within a very short time. Um, if you can if you can obtain a presidential management fellow um it's something you need to start on early but it, it's it's an it's a really really neat opportunity where they spend a lot of time and energy and training on on each person who has one and then they move you around through a few different agencies and it's it's a two-year position that um you will be very excited to get and you'll be very lucky to get and end up in an incredible career no matter what but uh that's probably good enough for now, Steve. Uh, if you want Sounds any good. questions, yeah. Were there any any questions um, about Forest Service positions? Um, and you can unmute yourself if you want to ask one, or just go ahead and type it. I don't see any in the chat box right now. Yeah, just go to General Lake Nance, Monica, or me. Uh, Vincent, I see uh, that you sent me some in my email. I'm not in my email right now, but um, I will. I'll make sure I get those back to you. So. Okay. Um, well, I, I'm going to just show really quickly. Uh, I'm going to highlight uh, the jobs that Dave Dave has. So let me um, do one thing. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate a, a quick overview. And apologize, it was so quick. That was that was my doing. Um, uh, I need to do one thing here. Let's see. Share. I need to share my. Where did it go? Huh. Hey, Dave. This is Danielle. Thanks mm -hmm. for that. Uh, I have a grad student here who wants your email address for more details. Can you tell us that real quick? Yeah, I actually have it on a slide if Steve still has that up. But uh, otherwise, it's uh, david.cernick at usda.gov. Great. Thanks. My phone phone number's up there too. I'm happy to hear from any student who just wants to go, I'm interested in something, I have questions, what do I do, where do I go type of thing. You can always call me and I'll, I'll answer your questions. I might be rushed or put you off or something, but um, call me and, and I will, you know, I'll, I'll talk to anybody. Uh, you know, I started as a grad student who was looking for a thesis to do and, uh, you know, I had a grueling professor who's like, you know, sounds like you need to do it about rivers. Sounds like you need to, you know, I wrote, came up with an idea, came up with a whole um, framework for a thesis. And, uh, you know, my professor's like, okay, now find a river to do it on. I'm like, what, or, or find a river to pay for it. And uh, it's like, well, how am I going to do that? He's like, you run rivers all over the place, find somebody to pay for it. Um, call them. And I ended up on sending it to the Rio Grande as one of them. And, uh, the Rio Grande folks were doing their planning and they wanted me to do that study and they didn't have any money to pay for it. They asked me if I was interested in being a river ranger. And that was kind of the beginning of my federal career. And, you know, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, so if, if you all can see my, uh, my um, screen here, I have the USA jobs up. Uh, it's just usajobs.gov. And some of those titles that we were reviewing with you, the, the slides will be available. You can just type the, uh, the first part of the title in the keywords there. Uh, so forest, if I can type, forestry technician, uh, you can see comes up. I've already done that. And I did a filter too here in this. I put a filter, which is on the right-hand side for the Department of Agriculture, because I would be interested in, in the forestry jobs that are open right now. And then you can see here, these are the positions that are open, uh, most of them that are open around the country uh, in, in forest recreation. So you can do that search. 
Um, and then the other terms that, uh, that Monica went through, you can do that search here. And you can set up reminders here for email. Um, the other thing that we have at the River Management Society, uh, most of the students who are in the certificate programs are members, student members. Uh, but you don't have to be a member. Uh, if you go under resources, on the resource center and go to careers, there's a jobs board. Um, and the jobs board will show you, uh, I just did a search here on forestry technician and it cross references that title too. So you can go to the to this and you can set up email reminders for yourself uh, and then you'll get the details of the job. And then you can actually, when you say apply to the company, it will take you to the USA job site and we'll we'll show you there. So there's some reminders there for it. And our director, Risa Shimoda, also will monitor this and she puts them in the digest uh, on a you know, couple weeks every basis. So to try to remind you all of where those are. So I, I don't want to go over too much. Um, we're, we're right at, at six o'clock my time, so a half hour. I really appreciate uh, Monica, I, who I think had to, to go off right there at the hour, and Dave for, for doing this on short, a really short notice. But I wanted to get this out there to you guys. We thought about this in March, and I, I wanted to at least provide an opportunity to, to have somebody from the agencies talk to you about the types of job opportunities they have. Please, I encourage you. Thank you for participating. And, and I hope that um, if you have any feedback for us on how to make this better or whether you liked it, uh, my boss always likes to see that. Please either email me or you can put a note there in the, um, in the chat box. And I will stay on for a little bit to answer any questions that you might have. But I definitely encourage you, uh, if you're interested in any of the forest jobs, there, there are great jobs in, you know, in Idaho, all, all kinds of rivers out west right now that close on the 30th of this month. Mm -hmm. um, get your application there. Put it out there. I know it's early and you might not be in that mode, but you need to get in that mode because the agencies are starting to do their hiring sooner because of all the security checks that they have to do yeah. to get you on board. So. Um, that is how we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up there and I will record, this has been recorded and I will post this, uh, as well as make the slides available. If you get your mentor to, uh, to contact me, um, I can, uh, give them the link to that as well. I'll send it out to all the, the, uh, I'll stay a few minutes programs. too, if you want, Steve. Awesome. Thank minutes. you, Dave. Sure. All right, so we got some thanks, and, and I hope folks enjoyed this. And, and if I get good feedback from you, we'll do it again next year. Um, Thank you, which folks. I think we'll, I'll, I'll give the folks a little more time next year before we do it. So, uh, awesome. Good luck in your job searches, and, uh, and let us know if there's some way we can help you. Um, so, guys, if you don't mind. Um, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, Go ahead, sir. Yeah, so Steve and or Dave, um, if you don't mind, I just have a few quick questions. And Steve, this is basically what I emailed you, but while we're on the horn here, um, I don't have any experience doing any kind of government work, any, anything really relevant, and I don't have a resume currently that shows anything like that. That being said, um, I have an associate from Colorado Mesa University, and I'm working on my bachelor's in environmental science. Um, my aspirations are to work with surface water. I wanna possibly be a hydrologist. I'm not sure exactly where I'll end up. Um, but my basic question is, how do I get my foot in the door? What should I do to um, start this off? I mean, I, I know I need to gear my resume to be more government related. And uh, I've, I've heard all kinds of things about that, but I haven't, haven't taken any steps in that direction and I just if there were one or two things that I could ask from you guys what do you think the big think? one is is get that resume up there on USA jobs um, a lot of it will coach you through there um, get all your relevant experience that you think would apply to any jobs and I mean read those jobs through and uh, and and you need to cover and address everything that is in that job um, description um, you know, if, if you drove across a bridge that covered a river, um, you know, damn near mention it. Um, you are dealing with sometimes folks that um, think at about an eighth grade level and they will miss stuff if you don't mention it or if you kind of say it in too many fancy words. Um, a lot of people, you know, 
we'll cover every skill that they have um, under and everything that they did under each and every job they ever had. Um, but yeah, look at those jobs, specifically what they're asking for and, you know, get that resume up there first and foremost, um, get all the spelling errors out of it, spell your name right. Um, you know, those types of things are really important. Um, when I get a list of 50 people to hire off of, um, one of the first things I will do is, is get rid of everybody who can't, um, you know, put together a decent resume that has everything spelled correctly and, and edited the right way. But, uh, you know, you got to start somewhere. There are jobs that are, you know, GS3 and 4, and you will qualify for them. But, you know, read for, read what people are looking for and, and make sure you are addressing the things, those skills that they're looking for, and you're applying for jobs that require skills that you do have. Um, you know, sometimes you do have, you, you know, tell the lies that you can't get caught for. Um, if, if you kind of have something that is almost there, it's, uh, you know, don't tell big, don't tell lies. I'm not telling you to do that, but uh, you know, you can make sure that people know you have great experience. Um, you know, if, 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 if you came close, that's great. The other big thing for me is, you know, I hire people who call and harass me and, and are really excited to have that job. You know, I, I can't really call you and interview you unless you make us make my list and you're, um, you know, really rate high or, but if, if I've talked to you a few times and I feel comfortable with you and you've told me all about yourself, I can't ask you the specific questions if you call me, but if, if, if you do, do uh, get together, uh, if you do call me and, and talk to me, I, I, and I feel good about you, I'm probably going to look for you when I get my list and you're on it, but uh, do everything that yeah. they ask for in that, in that job and get all the information in there and fill out every, every block and uh, you will, that's that's the place to start. And, and Vincent, you're in a good location there in, in Colorado. Um, uh, lots of BLM uh, river management going on in your region. Uh, I'd, I'd go to the ranger station and you know and talk to them there. Uh, we were just on the Colorado at um, uh, this summer and and had a great experience with the folks there with the BLM. And they're, they do have the internship program. I think an internship would be a great opportunity for you right now because you don't have, you know, the work experience um, or even just volunteer work. They have, you know, folks who work uh, both on the river and in the terrestrial environment along the river that are internship opportunities. They're not paid, but that's how you get the, your foot in the door is, you know, um, uh, and, and like I said, with you, the folks in the East don't have that opportunity because they don't, you know, the Forest Service is there in the East, so there'd be an opportunity there. But in the West, you have more agencies, uh, you know, Park Service, Forest Service, and BLM who are doing this work and, uh, and have, you know, more need and, and have limited resources. So if you're really willing to do work and you develop that relationship, uh, I would I would encourage you while you're in school, not you know before the summer job starts, is to reach out to them and see if uh, there's something that you could do with them. So um, I see some questions about, uh, and I've tried to answer them here about USA Jobs. I I had I struggle with USA, USA Jobs too because if you don't have the exact title, um, one word uh, searches are better. Like if you just do technician or recreation uh, or river. Uh, that will give you something, but if you try to put a whole term in that's wrong, it will say not found. So I found just putting one word in works really well. Um, but the jobs board, Glassdoor, even even a Google search uh, are, will link you to the jobs once they come up, but there's a little bit of a delay. But the jobs board, the RMS jobs board, uh, Reese was, was reviewing it with me the other day. It has, it links to multiple databases and it is a little bit more forgiving in terms of the search terms. So I would, I would give that a try as well. Mm -hmm. Are there yeah, any I, other questions there? Go ahead, Dave. Oh, it's, uh, you know, hey. take, take your, you know, spend the time to look for jobs and, and apply for jobs. You know, don't apply for just one job and, and wait for somebody to call you before you do your next application. This is, this is, um, this is a game of numbers and, you know, if you have an, a hundred applications in, you know, you're probably going to get some calls. If, if you have three in, um, you might be uh, working for your dad this summer. Um, <laughs> Danielle, did I hear, did I hear you? Yeah, we have a question here. It's um, the, the question was actually about not finding jobs that are available, but uh, when you, 
when they go to apply in USA Jobs and to upload the resume, it says that or they were mentioned, some of the students were mentioning that unless they have some magic code that their applications get booted out because apparently they don't use the right, maybe they need to know specific terminology to get their resumes to the people who are actually reviewing them for the jobs. So do you know any tricks to getting the resumes to the top of the pile? Or do you guys want to clarify on that USA Jobs issue? Those of you who have tried it? That's a good, I was, that's, that's pretty good. And also like when it asks for like re relevant experience, it's hard because if you don't have, if you, it's like, if you have experience and or education, you know, a lot of times it's hard to know how to answer that. And from what I've heard, sometimes if you're not answering it with the exact, like if you don't answer it the exact right way, you're, you might get filtered out with the computer before a person sees it. I don't know if that's true, but. Any, any thoughts, Dave? Uh, that's a hard one. Um, as I said, there's, there's, you know, you're not being reviewed by river people. Um, realize that first off going in. Uh, there's, uh, you are filling out bubbles sometimes that are assessing your, your skills. Um, I find a lot of my applicants are filling out bubbles that aren't, they're not being terribly truthful, but they filled out bubbles and they got on my list. Uh, then I, I either screen them out or I keep them and get past the bubble thing, but uh, um, not giving you any recommendations there. Uh, I'm just telling you about it, but uh, <clears throat> um, but yeah, you're dealing with, you know, I'll be real honest, you're dealing with somebody usually with about a, you know, it, it feels like a about an eighth grade level of thought and education or whatever. If they don't see that you've ever done something or re something related very clearly, then they're going to screen you out. Um, you know, it's like if you if you were a river technician, but you called it a stream technician and we're looking for a river technician, then they may miss that. Um, you know, being very clear on that type of stuff is really important, but I can't, uh, you know, to me, I was working um, for, you know, I was working for the Army Corps of Engineers on, on the Stanislaus River years ago. And, you know, it's like, I hate this job, I hate this agency, and I never want to work here anymore. And I want to work for the Forest Service. That's where I ultimately want to be. And I had no Forest Service experience. I was filling out um, job as, as applying for jobs all the time. And, it, you know, always kept hitting me up for um, Forest Service experience, relevant Forest Service experience or experience with Forest Service programs or databases or that type of stuff. So I started you know, I'd spend one day a week volunteering for the Forest Service nearby. Um, and I was basically, they didn't have anyone to even row the raft down the Tuolumne. So guess what? When it, when the job that I'm in came up and guess it said, do you have any experience with the Forest Service? And uh, I was finally able to say, oh yeah, you know, I've been part of a river program with the Forest Service for over a year. Um, and that's, that's a big thing. If this, this stuff's not easy. It's challenging, not necessarily seasonal jobs, but if, if you're going this way for a career, this is a time when you're a student and you have a lot of time that you don't think you have. Um, get out there and, you know, go to those offices and, and spend some time. Volunteer. Um, if you're a water quality person, go find a water quality office. Spend some time. Volunteer. If you're that person that spent some time there and the next job comes open, you're going to be in that job no matter what. If you're doing great work, they will keep you. They will find a way to keep you um, over hiring some stranger. Um, that's that's the way it works quite a bit. It's it's not, um, you know. Otherwise, if it doesn't, you still picked up some great experience. You know their you know their acronyms. You know how it works. You know you can talk their talk that makes them comfortable and happy to have someone come work for them who knows some of their office stuff. Um, think about that. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that the student's name, Danielle, but um, I mean, I was thinking that we could potentially, you know, look at that with you. I would encourage you maybe to go to your, your jobs placement office at the, at the university and maybe walk through with them as you're filling it out and see if they could give you some coaching. The other thing would, to do is when you, um, uh, there, each position that's submitted to the, to the uh, to USA Jobs has what are called KSAs, Knowledge, Skills, and Abilities. And it's basically a checklist, and it has the key language that you would need to reference. That key language is in the job description. So, so read the job description and mirror what the job description says as close as you can with the same language, because that's 
that's how it's submitted. My, my dad actually uh, was the project manager that wrote the system that processes government job applications. Uh, that was one of his big career things. Um, and all of it uses, it's a big database and it all uses KSAs and, and it uses that key language in the KSA to screen you out in the initial screening. Um, so even, even probably before a, a human looks at it. So I would, I would be very careful and, and read the description, have it next to you as you're filling it out and try to match as best you can the words that are, that are there um, with what you put in the system and, and look at the check boxes and see if there's a description for the level of things to try to you know, best assess what you're doing with what they're asking for. So that is just, that's just some general, because I've applied for a lot of government jobs as well. Um, the other thing that I had really good luck with is not uh, a .gov job, but a contractor who administers government jobs. Um, had better luck with them because they actually, their HR departments actually do talk to you. And there are, there are jobs like the Student Conservation Association and other organizations who do work on rivers and work with agencies. Uh, they're a little easier to get employed that way. It's not quite as bureaucratic a system. Uh, and uh, and a little easier to fill out their application materials. So that's another route that, that can get you in the door that will get you that next position in the next summer uh, with the agency. So just, just some ideas there. We're hiring a lot more that way nowadays too, just because our hiring is so miserable and cumbersome. And yeah, most people aren't getting their job applications in, in September because it doesn't make sense for a job that starts in June. Um, but yeah, get into, check out SCA or uh, ACE. Um, American conservation, um, but yeah, there's there's ju we use a lot of contractors now that that are providing us with with employees because it's you know it's easier for us to get to an applicant um, sometimes through places like SCA than uh, yeah I I used to follow a um, a a jobs board called environmentaljobs.org or something like that and it always too. had a section yeah had a section on um, uh, uh, environmental jobs, a bunch of different stuff, but it's a really good site and, and cross references a lot of the types of jobs that we're talking about. So. Environmental jobs out for Hey, Steven, it, does, yeah, it just occurred to me that yeah. doing a workshop like this, like uh, at the RMS Symposium uh, with the, with the River, Stu uh, River Studies and Leadership students that happen to be gathered there, because um, that would be early so we could kind of walk through some of the nuts and bolts of actually you know walking through an application we could even kind of you know sit down at some computers here on campus and, and have people go through the process of you know uh, addressing some of these issues that, that Danielle students just brought up um, maybe with some forest people service people in the room or, or you know BLM or whatever agency and just kind of like and then when you know since the deadline comes so early, because um, just kind of a little bit out of sync with the academic year. So unless our students, you know, now our students, this has been really beneficial for our students because to be honest, the students in the room here, uh, probably it hadn't even hit their radar. Right, they're not thinking about next summer yet. They should be, mm -hmm. but they're not. Um, mm -hmm. And th yeah. it's almost too late um, for some of these jobs. So I'm, I'm wondering if sort of backing it up like to, the, to May is not a bad time to be doing something like this. And since we'll have all a bunch of the students uh, together at the symposium, you know that might be a good way to to do some some career uh, professional development that would help them, you know, better better uh, apply for some of these kinds of positions. Yeah, we we could definitely do that, James. I appreciate that. Um, you know, be looking for the following year, which is which is fine. Just get them sort of tuned in to to that that uh, that calendar. Um, so I appreciate that. Uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do there in Richmond with you. So, all right. Well, I'm going to uh, need to go. And again, thank you, Dave, for hanging around. Thank you, everybody, for uh, for tuning in. And you know, you. this is an important part of why we have the certificate program. Is we, we there's a you know hopefully we can create this pipeline where your your instructors and the curriculum are are getting your interest in this. We, we get you placed with an agency for a, a, a summer job, and and then hopefully that leads to a career in river management because we definitely need folks like like yourselves uh, in in the field. So thank you everyone, and I'm going to log off now, and we will we will see you soon. Thank you guys very much. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you everyone.
Nein, ja. 